Winter in Alaska plunges us into darkness. Lack of light turns the windows of our houses into mirrors, throwing reflections of ourselves back at us. In winter, some things are hard to escape, so we go outside, we cling to light. We grab clam guns and shovels one night when it's 10 degrees and there's a minus tide at midnight. Here, the year is marked by harvests. Salmon, berries, wild greens, mussels. You can't help but feel rich. I moved to Alaska about 10 years ago, wondering what life would be like at the edge of wilderness, wondering what I would be like at the edge of it. I grew up in East Coast suburbs, and nothing I had known before seemed useful here. Oh, okay. Okay, we're gonna try for this. We're gonna try for this little little dimple right there. Making a life here became a story about constant change. I learned this from the bay on which I live. The tide is never still. A new front is always pushing in. The color of the sea changes every day. Most people think that winter shuts Alaskans in their homes, but the time of snow and ice is the time when much of Alaska is its most open. Winter makes the landscape otherwise soggy and river-sliced in so much of the state far more traversable than during the thawed months. It's, we got about another half mile. Uh, there used to be a tree that was kind of a good landmark. Still, there's a closeness to winter sometimes a cold claustrophobia. The mountain ranges and grand vistas around us disappear in the dark. Unless a fat moon rises, we are left only with the world close at hand. In winter, we tightrope walk a boundary between community and isolation. Summer visitors have long since flushed out of town, and the beach is empty. You can ski out your back door for hours and never see anyone. But then we gather, we build fires, share dinners of baked salmon and bottles of wine. We go out into the night. Tide, Feather, Snow, A Life in Alaska. I hope you enjoy this book. <laughs>